there are a few sights more satisfying than a beautiful garden. But what do you do if your outdoor space isn't quite so picture perfect and you're short on time? Well, meet the instant gardener. Ta-da! Danny Clark is an expert at transforming gardens. Here's my plan. I'm going to rejuvenate this garden. Each time our gardening guru will show you how to create gorgeous garden makeovers. That's the art of garden design, delegation. Each transformation will be packed with brilliant ideas and tips. It makes it easier to cut through. To help you get to grips with your own outdoor space. It does feel unnatural, but take your time. With his magical ideas. These flowers will look like they're floating in amongst the grasses. And advice on spending wisely on a budget. That's why Danny makes me bring a list. OK. Oh, my word. This is amazing. And because he's the instant gardener, everything you see will happen in just one day. Oh, my God. That looks so much better. Today we're in Barnsley, a town with a proud industrial heritage nestling in the rolling hills of South Yorkshire. It may have once been a metropolis of mining, but beyond the relics of industry runs a rich seam of community life and nature at its greenest. In Yorkshire, you're never far from a bit of gorgeous countryside and the couple we're meeting today want to make the most of what is quite literally on their back doorstep. Hello! Hi. You must be Claire. I am, yeah. And Richard? Yep, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You don't to come in. Thank you very much. Devoted young couple Claire and Richard live in a new build house, along with their three much loved cats. They married two years ago and have been trying for a family, but are now exhausted after several heartbreaking rounds of unsuccessful IVF. Now they've decided to take a break to recover from the emotional cost and focus on appreciating the friends and family they've already got. As they both work long hours at a mental health unit, their spare time is precious and they'd love a garden where they can relax together as well as entertaining their loved ones. Claire and Richard's existing garden sweeps up from the back of the house in a steep slope. Good for catching the sun, but making it both very hard to manage and difficult to make useful. Like many new homes, there's a noticeable lack of planting here. Only an unkempt, weed-ridden lawn and a lonely acer by the fence. There's a very small patio next to the house, but no real area for the couple to relax. Unless, of course, it's in the pint-sized and dilapidated chalet in the corner. It may seem like an uphill task to Claire and Richard, but for Danny, the shape of this garden is a real design challenge. That, to me, looks like a brilliant place to sledge. Yes, it is. And we have spent many a Christmases sledging down that hill. Who's the Wendy house for? Uh, our cats. We work long hours, so we wanted somewhere for them to go when we weren't here. And somewhere nice and cosy, the food were in there, litter trays, mm. you know, to look after them. But it's become derelict now. The door fell off in the high wind we had. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. we haven't managed to put it back on because it's warped. <laughs> oh, well, it's cute. I thought it was where you put Richard when he's been in trouble. There's well, been I times. spent many a night in there as well, so <laughs> it's not too bad. So how do you use the garden at the minute? At the minute, we sit out on nights, use our wood burner, and that's pretty much it. How much of a problem is that, Danny? Well, we're going to work with it, bearing in mind that we're going to build a garden in a day. Yes. So what do you want out of it? Obviously. We get a lot of sun, so we like to suntan, and this is our serenity. <laughs> so you want this as a space in which you can entertain? Yes. Yeah. Family and friends, but mainly for us, just... somewhere to relax and just peace and serenity. Easy maintain. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> but also on cold nights, maybe have wood burner out and mm -hmm. cosy, cosy night in his garden, rather than thinking, is it going to snow yet so we can sledge down that <laughs> <laughs> it's quite difficult, isn't it? Because that is quite a steep slope. Good for rolling down. Yeah, it's not good for lawn mowing. No. no. Right, well, Danny, we're going to get out of your hair because yeah, I know okay. you've got plenty to be cracking on with. You know what's coming now, don't you, Helen? I've got the book. Thank you very much. OK. This is our shopping list. Are these going to be difficult plants to maintain? No, they should be nice and easy for you to maintain. 
Thank you very much. We'll get out of your hair and let you crack on. Right. Have fun. And you. Thank See you, you soon. See you, See you soon. Bye. See you in a bit. While I take the couple off for a spot of research, Danny has only ten hours to transform their precipitous plot. So what's the plan, Dan? One of the things that I've noticed, as with a lot of new build properties, is this excuse for a patio down here. I won't even call it a patio. I'll just call it a path. So there's nowhere for them to sit. This is my plan. We're going to give Claire and Richard a new patio. Now, what most of us tend to do is build up patios very close to our houses. Now, that's absolutely fine, but I'm going to build a circular patio in the garden, which is going to cut into this bank. Now, this is going to make full use of the bank and the sun, which comes from just over there. Now, I'm going to rejuvenate this garden with contemporary plants in the style of prairie planting. Prairie plants will love the conditions in this garden because we've got full sun here and also it's free draining. So they will thrive. I'm going to work with the tree that's in this garden. And what I mean by work with the tree is that I'm going to add another two just to give the garden more height and more interest. So we've got a low planting of the grasses and that's going to be complemented with the height of the trees. Overall, we're going to do a contemporary design for a contemporary couple, and I think that will suit them down to the ground. Danny's handyman AJ and horticultural expert Lou are here to help as always. But Danny and his team never say no to extra help, and two of Claire and Richard's friends, Gavin and another Claire, have stepped up to the plate. Hello, Claire. Hello, Gavin. Hello. Yeah. So, you are the helpers for the day, are you? We yep. are. Right, how do you know these guys? What's, uh, how have you got roped into this? Uh, we know them through work. You both know them through work? Yeah. yeah. All right, then. Have they ever helped you help out on projects like this before? Uh, no, first time. Yeah. Are you used to manual labour? Uh, no, really. but I'm willing to give it a good shot. Right. We're going to build a circular patio here. Oh, lovely. And we're going to cut it into that bank. Right, and that's going to be infilled with slate and it's going to be edged with timber and we're going to have a flower bed running around there. Do you Lovely. think they'll like it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Good. brilliant. That's a relief. I bet it's a relief to you as well, isn't it, AJ? Well, for the time being, <laughs> until you change it as usual. Yeah, but AJ, that's a designer's prerogative, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> He's a broken man. I am. I am. Right, AJ, I think the first task for us to do is get some marker string and mark out where this patio is going to go. Mowing the lawn before digging will help lose some weight from that circle of turf that they're going to have to dig out. Now, when you go higher with it, just remember to lift your wrist up a little bit. You're getting good at this, aren't you? I'm getting good. With the edge of the patio marked out, it's time to start the biggest job of the day. Shifting over two tonnes of earth to create the patio area. Starting with stripping that freshly mown turf. Go, AJ. Once we've taken the turf off, we're then going to dig down and barrow the earth into skip, which is at the front of the house. With a skip already hired and extra hands to help barrow the waste, it sounds easy enough. But not everyone's got the knack of this gardening lark yet. Show me how you would dig. Hmm, <laughs> yeah. distinct lack of welly there. Right, OK. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'll show you how to dig. So, Claire was doing this. We respect you, Claire. <laughs> Pathetic, weren't it? Now, now, digging, just, you've got to really go for it. Right. Don't be frightened. <laughs> just, just go for it and give it some oomph. Just take out a section. Don't go too far back, here. Just go... E e yeah, right. just take out a little section. Go around the turf, like that. Yeah? Yeah. So you dug into chop the turf, away. chop away, and then go down. There they are. See? Piece of cake. Right, we'll see if it works. In, <laughs> wiggle. Wiggle. Go on, you can do it. Push it again, and then push down deeper, once you're out of the way. That's it. Well done. First. Nice bit of mark. First proper dig. <laughs> oh, I'm going ahead now. But in a strange sort of way, is it easier now? 
Oh, yeah. Now yeah. that you've got technique. I didn't realise there was so much to dig in. Yeah, there is, but it, once you've got the technique, it is a lot easier. See any sweat? Not yet. With the sun making a rare instant garden appearance, the team are soon sweating away. Meanwhile, I've planned a more relaxing morning for Richard and Claire at a local garden, also built into a steep slope. Like Danny's design, it's made for tranquility and socialising, with the help of some Eastern influences. OK. Now, have a look Ooh. at this. Crikey. Water feature, mm. grasses, that sort of prairie-style planting. What do you make of this? I like the bushy-type things. <laughs> I don't know what they're called, but I like them. Is that the technical term? Yeah. Yep, 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 for me. <laughs> Ponds, I've, I've only ever had one pond before in my life. I didn't really maintain it very well. Quick, let's get Danny on the phone. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite, you see, a lot of people find water quite relaxing. Do you think this has had yes. a calming effect? Yes. It's a calming effect. We, we've seen a few features before, haven't we? Yeah, we have, Trickling yeah. water, not necessarily a pond, but trickling water, and that's been nice. Sort of borderline before you need to go to the toilet. That, that's sort of relaxing, isn't it? <laughs> it's a nice, it's a nice feature. I like this. Yeah. It's lovely. Yeah. And lots of wispy grass. Cats yeah, would like seems that. Seems low maintenance. I like that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, there's plenty more to see in this garden, so lead the way, Richard. Will do. Do you like the feel of that, Claire? I like it, and I think cats like that sort of wispiness. Oh, so it's more for the cats than yes. yours. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot of different plants going on. Colours. <laughs> do you like that? Yes, mm, I do like colour, a bit yeah. of colour. Well, come this way, because I think you're going to like what's around the corner. I want them to see this circular seating area in the hope that they'll want something similar of their own. Would you like something like that? Yes, I would. Mm, yeah, definitely. It, it stands out. That's what I like. And you've talked about using this as a space to entertain, bring your family yes. and friends mm. round. I'd be proud for them to see things like that in our garden. Have a look at this show-stopping plant. It looks very fancy, quite posh. It's a garden onion, but it's actually very easy to look after. I don't know a lot about flowers and plants, but it's, it's really posh, doesn't it? It looks nice. It... Colourful. Yeah, colourful, yeah. yeah. And this is very low maintenance. You put a bulb in, it grows like that. You don't have to do a lot. It's something that we'd want. Yeah, that's definitely for us. Right, well, the next bit you're going to love. This garden has not one, but several circular areas. An idea which could work brilliantly for social creatures Claire and Richard. Right, have a seat, you two. Oh. Now, Thank you. this really does have the wow factor, doesn't it? It does. It looks low maintenance and very nice. What do you think of this sort of entertaining space? I like it because it involves, it'll be involving everybody in the family. It's not yeah, just it's one ideal. or two. Yeah. It's it's everybody's around one place. Can Everybody get... together, you know, maybe a game or two, deck of cards. You know, it's... Would you use the garden as an extension of your house? I mean, your kitchen's normally your, your focal point where everybody gathers, but I think it's nice if it's your garden. Yeah, especially in the uh... summer months where yeah. it's, it's nice sunshine in our garden anyway. Yeah. Back in Claire and Richard's own garden, the circular groundworks are in full swing, and Danny's picked up a few more helpers along the way. Now, I just found this over there. Now, these are a gardener's friend. One of the things we do notice in gardens at certain times of year are these worm casts. Worm casts are these little curly heaps of soil excreted by some species of earthworm. But don't worry about it. What it means, if you've got these in your garden, it means that you've got a happy garden. You've got a garden that's healthy. So, I'm going to put this back where I got it from. Oh, I've tried it. Danny's human helpers are working hard too, motivated by their desire to give their friends a well-deserved treat. Claire and Richard, I mean, they've had a pretty tough time, haven't they? Yeah, yeah it's been a struggle for them over last year. It's been hard, you know, they've been trying for a baby and... Yeah. They've had IVF and, uh, basically, it failed twice. Right. So it's been really, really tough for them because to go through IVF, you've got to quite change your lifestyle. Sure. What do they have to do? Well, there's obviously there's no drinking. You've got to be really sensible, make sure you're stress-free. Sure. Uh, so they've not really been doing too much over the last year. And it's been a lot of focus on trying for a family. That's sure. been the main focus, so I think... 
relaxing and having a good time. It's just been put on back burner. Sure. So they definitely need of so they need of to, a tree. Yeah, so they need to be spreading their wings a bit again, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, no. Because they've kind of felt a bit restricted. Yeah. And I, and I can see from speaking to the two of them that they are very sociable people. Oh, yeah, yeah. very. Life and, I bet they're the life and soul of the party, aren't they? <laughs> Can't imagine a better couple. It's hot work in the blazing sun, but the groundworks are progressing. With a large bite taken out of the hillside to create the new circular patio, the team need to shore up the remaining earth. The main job now is to dig a trench to house the retaining wall. The retaining wall is going to be made from these timber posts, which are going to be butted together like this. These are going to retain the bank. It will keep back the weight of all this soil, which is very important, because over time it will erode. But they're going to stand proud above the level, the surface of the soil. Um, that way, if anything rolls down the bank, it's not going to roll onto the seating area. As a rule of thumb, when you put posts in the ground, you should put them in at least a third deep, a third of the height of the post, and that way it will make the wall nice and solid. Now, these are made from treated wood. Doesn't mean that they won't rot. They will rot eventually, but they will rot a lot slower than if they were untreated. A great advantage we use in these posts is that it makes it easier for us to get a curve, whereas bricks are a lot more difficult. front, AJ is cutting up the poles, making different lengths so that the wall can be graduated, higher at the back and much lower at the front. How's it going, AJ? It's going well. It's You're going confident well. we'll get it done? I'm actually, at the moment, luckily, getting three of the acquired lengths out of one. We've got a, a 70 length, a 60 length and a 50. Once they get tapped into the ground with the concrete round, it's all good. Yeah, it's going well, it's going well. Good. It's just, Great weather, so you can't complain. Absolutely can you? beautiful. But just as things seem to be going to plan, there's a problem. Danny has struck rock. I think we've got builders' rubble in the grounds here. Often away with new build properties. Um, so gardeners like myself are left to pick up the pieces. This rubble could mean trouble. Digging rock rather than soil will cost the team valuable time. While Danny wrestles with that problem, back in the beautifully finished garden, Claire, Richard and I are channelling our energy in a different direction. This garden is inspired by the ancient Chinese art of Feng Shui. And to find out more, I've arranged for us to meet its designer, Lee Bestol. Lee, lovely to see you. Hello. This is Claire and Richard. Hello, how are you? Hi. Talk us through this fabulous garden because, I mean, we love it, don't we? <laughs> So the idea behind this garden was to create a tranquil space, mainly to fuse this area around the house with the wilderness of the fields beyond. Talk us through the lay of the land. I mean, you're dealing with quite steep hills here, and these guys have a steep hill in their garden. How much of a challenge is that? It was a challenge on this site. We had a two-metre difference between the back of the garden and the centre where we needed to create level spaces. And it was quite important, obviously, for a seating area to be level. So we used the cut and fill method. So we cut out sections of earth and then we fill them in somewhere else, put retaining walls in and then created these level um, areas where we've got different things going on in each space. Oh, I guess that's something you have to think about, isn't it? If you're taking out big chunks of earth, you need to retain it and hold it back for safety. Yeah, yeah. Because I quite like the height difference. It makes it quite private. And your garden is very private, isn't it? It's very private, but very steep. This is a, a garden d designed around feng shui. And the whole thing about feng shui is, is not to have sharp corners and straight lines. So this whole garden, if you view it from up in the house, it kind of is an, a selection of interlocking circles with these kind of walls that wrap around to create cosy spaces. Feng Shui is an ancient Chinese philosophy, which provided a system of harmonising people with the environment around them. The use of circles and curved lines is supposed to slow down the energy flowing through a space. 
But how do you get it? Is that why you've gone for a series of circles? How key are they? Yeah, I mean, the circles really came from the feng shui thing because we can't use straight lines. We want to create these intimate spaces, um, spaces where friends and family can sit around an area, whether it's dining, sat around a fire pit, or sat on sofas like this. Um, it's very nice to interact with people when you can see them. And I think today, when, when you're in a garden, um, it, it's an opportunity to just chat and relax. So feng shui, in terms of creating a nice energy in a garden, is that something that's important to you guys? Richard's mum always said to clap in corners as part of feng shui, and she gave us crystals as well yeah, to put just up. just to create a positive energy yeah. throughout his house, and I think it's... And that's all we've really touched on with yeah. feng shui and... If it could go out into his garden, it'd be yeah. lovely. Do you feel your garden is a space in which you could have positive energy and that might have an effect on your life? I think that's something we definitely, definitely. need. <laughs> definitely to de-stress as well, you know, after a long shift. You guys want an area in which you can entertain. Yes. This is a perfect entertaining space. How have you created that atmosphere in here? So we've zoned the space, basically. So you've got the seating area here, we've got an area which might have a fire pit in it, um, and we've got an area for dining. What have you had to plan, given the conditions that you're working with? So we've, we've planted lots of prairie-style planting, lots of grasses, um, lots of low-growing perennials, because those, those herbaceous perennials you can cut right down in winter, and then they come back up in spring. We've used things like orange, red and yellow colours um, later on in the season, and at the moment it's all looking quite purple, blue and white. We can't use things like the bamboos and aces, which traditionally would be associated with feng shui gardens, just because they would get hammered with the wind and weather up here. And it's quite relaxed, it ties in well with what is just outside the garden, but it copes well in this kind of environment. Yeah, it's all, it's all very hardy. It's been, the planting's been here for two years now, so it's seen two harsh winters out here. Um, so it's, it's all, they're all hardy northerners. <laughs> We're reinforcing the stereotypes <laughs> of the north. Yes, these plants are hard and they can cope. Lee, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Whether feng shui is something you subscribe to or not, its design rules have certainly created a sense of harmony and well-being here. This garden is packed with great ideas, some of which you might feel inspired to try in your own outdoor space. Don't be afraid to carve flowing circular shapes into your garden. They will help to break up the monotony of the typical oblong shape back garden and will allow your eyes to move restfully around the space. A circular space also makes a great shape to entertain in, just as a circular dining table is good for a group conversation. And if you have poor soil in your garden, this can be a plus. Our native wildflowers and long grasses thrive on poor soil, so this contemporary style may be perfect for your space. Back on the Barnsley hillside, the team are digging a trench to hold the wall of poles that will surround Danny's sunken patio. But there's a further blow. The ground is full of rocks, more than just a bit of typical builder's rubble. The problem is we've got so far down now into the ground that there's just big boulders. Even eternal optimist Danny is feeling the pressure. You know I said at the beginning of the day that this hill wasn't going to be a problem. It was a positive thing and I was going to make a positive out of it. Now that I'm digging into the bank, I'm not quite so sure. I've just been out the front there and the neighbour's just come up to me and he's just said it took him and a friend of his over four and a half days to dig something like this out. The reason why all this uh, sort of rubble we're coming across is apparently this whole area used to be a school. Oh, right. And they flattened it and just churned up all this stuff here and then oh. covered it with the soil to then obviously had it down as like a foundation mm. and stuff like that. I tell you what, most of that is hidden in this bank, I reckon. Yeah. There's no topsoil here at all, maybe an inch, and that's about it. Leaving his helpers to carry on quarrying, Danny needs to concentrate on making a suitable planting area for his new trees. When planting trees into a bank, make a little shelf for them. So you've got your bank like this, try and make a shelf into the bank. OK, now the reason for this, A, you want your tree to remain upright, you don't want it to be leaning over like this. And also, by doing that, any water that's running down the bank will fall into the shelf and the water will go where it's most needed, and that's into the tree's roots. 
Now this is called Sorba Sorterspire, which is absolutely gorgeous. It's also known as Mountain Ash and Rowan. Now the reason I put this in the garden is because it'll only grow to four meters, which is great for a small garden. Now, don't let the word ash put you off. It's not the member of the ash family. It won't suffer from ash dieback. It's a member of the rose family. This tree has got an absolutely beautiful, light, fluffy white flower. Now this flower is followed by a lovely orange yellow berry. And then in the autumn, these leaves turn a lovely orangey color. This is great value because this will give you multiple seasons of interest. And if you can only afford one tree, what a tree to go for. The makeover might be in full swing, but I want to take some downtime with Claire and Richard to find out just what their new garden will mean to them. Talk me through how you two met, because it's quite an unusual love story in terms of where it happened, isn't it? Well, we both met where we work. Mental yeah. health unit. Yeah. And basically, we did a lot of work, well, shifts together, didn't we? We've become yeah. good friends. And then, later on, we, we started dating. It just felt right, I think. Yeah. And how yeah. long have you been together? Um, we've been together about four years. Been uh, married for just over two. Working in a mental health unit must be quite draining at times, but rewarding as well. It can be very rewarding when you know you've done your job properly and you've done it right. Every day is different as well. There are really poorly people. It can be very dangerous sometimes. Yeah. Um, High risk of assaults. Yeah, high risk injury. of assaults, but it's, there's usually a reason behind it. Are you always at work at the same time, or do you miss each other? It's not always the 12-hour days and 12-hour nights, so there's no in-between. Passing ships. As well as working long hours in their demanding mental health careers, Claire and Richard have also had to deal with life-changing loss. You've had a particularly difficult couple of years because the plan was to start a family, yeah. But it's not quite happened yet, has it? No. We've been going through IVF for it's been just over 12 months. First attempt, it failed. Um, and then we decided to try again. And then two days before Christmas, we found out the baby had no heartbeat. So we were obviously crushed. So we both decided that enough was enough for that 12 months of our lives. Yeah. We needed to fix us because it's a, it was a very stressful time having to go through hospital appointments and medications so we said we'll leave it a year and get back to me and Richard didn't we mm, yeah get us back on track it took over consumed our lives didn't it yeah and obviously you're physically going to it Claire mm. but emotionally Richard you're on that roller coaster too and looking out for the person you love how has it been for you the difficult thing is that there are couples support networks out there for people going through IVF but there's not one just for males. You know, you want to be a support for a partner, but there's only so many times that you can say, how are you feeling, is everything all right? Before they're just words, you know, and it, it, it pushed me to a point where I maybe could have done with a bit more support, but Claire needed it more so than me, you know. And you've credited your support network with helping you get through a really difficult mm. time. Would it be nice to be able to have those people around, your family, your friends? Yes, it, 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 it'd mean a lot to be able to have be able to do, give something back to them. Yeah. If they were to come to us, we'd be able to cook for them and spend time with them in our garden. It'd be that's yeah. what it'll be. Just giving something back to the people that looked after us for a year and a bit. Yeah, they just listened to us just whinge when we couldn't shout at each other yeah. anymore. <laughs> we, we had another set of ears that we could we could use. I don't want to upset you, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but Claire, you nominated Richard to get this garden because you wanted to say thank you. Yeah. For that's, that's the main reason, is I wanted to say thank you to you, because you haven't had that support network. You've had me saying, it's OK, I'm fine, but you haven't really had a break from work. You've gone to work, come home and done the same job with me as you do at work. So you've, done, you've looked after me a lot this last year, so I wanted you to have something nice to come home to and relax in. Back at the house on the hill, the solid rubble has taken its toll. With only four hours left, the retaining wall for the circular patio hasn't even been started. I mean, I know we're going to make this a bit higher, but um, it just saves a bit of time and effort. Danny's getting twitchy about the time and a drastic solution is needed. 
AJ. Yes, mate? Um, there's a bit of an issue. To save a bit of time, I come up with another solution. Instead of using log edging at the front, I thought it might be an idea to have one strip of aluminium at the front, which will save us time in putting the logs in place um, and also time in, you know, putting the cement in place. Yeah. What do you think? Well done. Do you know, okay. you've actually had a good idea. Have I? I'm loving it. I really am genuinely loving it. See you soon. With only a small trench needed for the aluminium edging, Danny has slashed the digging time and soon the posts can be fixed into place. Now AJ can start lining up the wooden posts for the rest of the retaining wall. Pencil. Thank you. Put it in my top pocket. Yeah. Put it behind my ear. Put it behind my ear. <laughs> Once they're all present and correct, he can permanently set them with concrete. Meanwhile, to fully realise Danny's design, we've come here to this local garden centre to find him the right plants. Well, this looks well stocked. And busy. A lot of plants. Do you spend much time in a garden centre? Yeah. We tried looking to get inspiration, but we didn't even know where to start, so... No. This is intimidating. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot Lots of flowers to take in, to be honest. Richard and Claire are not alone. Us Brits spend five billion quid a year on garden products and plants, but often have no idea what's right for our gardens. So Danny's number one rule is, when you're going shopping, always write a list. Danny wants us three good-sized Festuca Glauca. I think that's how you say it. And a big, steeper Gigantia. Yeah, that sounds right, Gigantia. Do they mean anything to you? Oh, no. Like but we'll find them. We can find them in here. <laughs> But before we get stuck into Danny's list, we're using what we've learned on our garden visit to find a couple of other personalised plants. Would you prefer something that's pretty for a few weeks or will survive year after year? Well, just surviving, yeah. A bare grill, a flower, that's what I want. I worry too much about buying something and then not being able to look after it. We can prune it every now and again, but if it majority takes care of itself, it'll be a lot easier. Yeah. OK, let's get out of the heated greenhouse then. These lilac trees are nice, aren't they? I do love these, but they are far too complicated for our garden. We have got a tree and we do like trees, but we don't look after it very well. No, not really. Cats prefer it a lot more to us. Yeah, now they can climb it's, it. It's the garden climbing frame. Lots of purple in here. It is. It's pretty. <laughs> now, have a look at these. Do you recognise these? Oh, these are beautiful. I really like these. Allium. Allium. Would you like a couple of these for your garden? Definitely, yeah. Because they are easy to look after and they're pretty even before they've flowered, aren't they? And then in terms of what we need from our list, I think we should get some help. Yes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Back in Barnsley, the hard landscaping is nearly complete. But with less than three hours to go, the team must pull all the stops out now. Claire and Gavin have moved on to the battered but beloved cat house and Danny is making a start on his prairie planting, a style which originated in the good old US of A. Prairie planting. Now, when I think of prairie planting, I think of the wild open spaces of North America. Now, this is a miniature version of that. We're going to have a variety of heights with the grasses in this border. And what I've chosen here is this Miscanthus sinensis, which probably grow to about a metre in height. We've got the Carex here, which is absolutely wonderful. Intermingled with all these grasses, this lovely orange geum, which, when given time, these flowers will look like they're floating in amongst the grasses. Will look absolutely wonderful. And to finish it all off, we've got those yellow flowered Achilles, which are shimmering in this sun. What's lovely about that? The overall effect is of a meadow. When Richard and Claire are out here in their garden, they can imagine that they're in an open meadow. How relaxing is that? Of all of Danny's prairie grasses, one of the most dramatic is the super hardy Miscanthus sinensis. Easy for Danny to say. Miscanthus sinensis, what a lovely grass. It grows to one and a half metres in height. And what is great about this, although it goes brown in the winter, I would leave it and the birds will enjoy the seed heads. And what I would do is cut it back early in the spring, just as the new shoots are beginning to appear and a new growth comes through and then you'll have another lovely grass for the following spring. With only one hour remaining, the patio can be finished at last. 
It's slate o'clock. It's time to put the slate down. Of course, one of the things you could do here is put some membrane down, some weed suppressant. But I personally choose not to do it because I'm going to put the slate down at least three inches thick. That way, nothing's coming through it. I think this is probably one of the easiest patches you can make. It's something that anybody can do. So basically, just get your shape. Once you've got your shape, dig out to a depth of at least three inches and then put your gravel or slate in. And there you are, an instant patio. Oh, he makes it sound easy now. Have you forgotten about digging out all of that rock, Danny? Dry or wet, I love slate, but I much prefer it after it's rained and it's damp. It just gives it that little bit of an edge. <laughs> It's a slate dance. Flatten it out. Here we go. <laughs> How's that? Looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah. You prefer it wet, you said? I, quite, I like it wet. Yeah. I like it when it's dry. Oh, do you? Mm, I well, like you the see, light colour. You see, it dries yeah, out quite it, quickly. It does, yeah. Actually. Still at the garden centre, I've tracked down the owner, Emma Horsfield, to help us with our mysterious plant list. Emma, good to Hello. see you. This is Claire and Richard. Hello, nice, nice to meet, to meet you. you, Claire. Hello, Hello, Richard. Hello. We are after your expertise because we're after some Festuca Glauca. Yes, absolutely. And some Steeper Gigantia. Yes, we have both of those. Yes. So what are they? They're types of grasses, ideal for dry patches in your garden. They look perfect in prairie planting. So you'll see them in massive, sweeping, you know, picturesque landscapes. But they can also be good in a small area of the garden as well. Oh. Uh, the Stipia Gigantica grows up to about here. It's got a lovely plume of feather. Looks fantastic. And in the wind, it sort of sways like this. And the Festia is a dwarf grass. It's a sort of bluey green. It grows about this high and has a very little delicate flower. Both are very, very tough. They grow in lovely sunny spots. They don't need much watering, very low maintenance, easy to look after. What? Brilliant. Music to you is. Definitely. That is, definitely. Prairie planting is all the rage. Very, very modern, very on trend, yeah. You see, Maybe you said trendy. you're not gardeners, but you're going to have a very in vogue garden if we get some of those. <laughs> trendy. <laughs> Do these work quite well in sunny patches? Perfect for those, yeah. Uh, Stipia gigantica comes from the sort of med you'll see it in Spain, in France, often on mountainside areas at the bottom, where it's really rocky, really dry, so you hardly have to water it. It's very low maintenance. That's mm -hmm. good. We haven't got an outside tap, so that's even better. <laughs> Lead Perfect. us to the Stipia gigantica. Just over here. Real. Here we are. This is the sticker. Do you like it? I that love is it. tall, isn't it? Very tall. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, if you put it on the floor, you can actually see how tall it is. Look. And is that it fully grown? Um, it'll bush out a lot more from the bottom all around here and obviously get lots more plumes coming up. This is nearly coming into flower. Can you see here? See these little pretty delicate flowers coming? Oh, yeah. yeah. Nearly there. And these will last right throughout the summer. Oh, yeah. It's often called golden oat as well, as it resembles oats. Can you see? Yeah. Very so delicate, split. yeah. And they'll last right throughout the season, flowering season, sometimes into early autumn, just depending on the weather. How do you feel about this kind of plant in your garden, then? I, I like it. it. Sounds like it's tailor-made. Yes. <laughs> it's the one for you, it's I think. It's the one for yeah. <laughs> Fits all our needs. So you literally don't have to do anything with this. Once it's in the ground, it's going to take care of itself. Absolutely. You may want to divide it if you find it's dying off a little bit at the bottom. Sometimes at the bottom it can go very slightly yellow. You see here? Yeah. This is when you would need to be dividing it to produce more green lush. Right. We also have on our list Festuca glauca. Absolutely. Now, this is a blue little grass here. Oh. Evergreen blue grass. This is in flower at the moment. Just have a little feel at the flowers. Aren't they delicate and lovely? Oh, they feel nice then. Yeah. <laughs> so you've had these in a greenhouse? This has been in the cold greenhouse over winter. Yeah. So it looks really lush and green. It's nice. But this has been outside over winter. Right, I right can see home. the difference. Mm. So it's just catching up with it being a bit cool, and in summer it'll look like this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But once again, you can just leave this to look after itself. Absolutely, yes, of course you can. It's very That's easy to look want. after, low yeah. maintenance. That's what we want. And you said your cats like a bit of long grass to. Yes, they like to hide and weave in and out of it, so. Ideal. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. We're happy, we're happy. Feel the grass like this, could you feel it? Yeah. And then it'll bounce back up. Very resilient. That's brilliant. Tough as old boots. You could almost trample on this. Brilliant. Perfect. <laughs> well, let's get three or four of those. Okie dokie. And a couple of these. So I'll pick you some nice ones out. It's a good one. Brilliant. Very OK, much. let's get them yeah. to the counter. After you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. 
Danny and the team may have been creating a prairie paradise, but it's long past high noon and I need to see how they're getting on. Hello, Danny. Hello, Helen. How are you? Look at this. Look at this. Some blue grass, brilliant. And an allium. Superb. Danny, I absolutely love what you've done with this garden. I love the Wendy house. And I love that they've got an entertaining space. It's grown up, but it feels fun. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, this is brilliant. They're going to love sitting out here with the fire pit, making the most of these plants. They're worried that these plants are going to be high maintenance, are they? No, these are absolutely fine. Well, they like the look of these because they were hardy for their young okay. visitors and relatives. We've got a few more, so I'll go and get them for you. OK, and I'll put these in the ground. I love this! <laughs> it's now a final push to the finish to get the garden neat and tidy. Can I put this here, Danny? Yeah, just put it there. I think it'll be fine there, Helen. It looks brilliant. Finally, this hillside haven is complete. This morning, it was a plain, soulless patch of land, the same as new builds up and down the country, with the bare minimum of patio and hardly a plant in sight. But during the course of only one day, Danny has utterly transformed it. Doing anything with that steep slope was an overwhelming prospect to inexperienced gardeners Claire and Richard. With some imaginative design and the labour of love of their friends, it's now the focus of a garden made for relaxation. The circular patio is designed to provide a social centrepiece, where the couple can entertain friends and family without sliding down the hill. Using inexpensive treated timber for a wall like this saves money, which can then be better spent on eye-catching landscaping material like this blue slate. The sparse lawn has been dotted with a few well-chosen trees with several seasons of interest maximising colour for the cash. And Danny's prairie grasses swaying gently in the breeze have created a meadow in miniature. Last but not least, the crumbling cat house has been transformed into a colourful palace. Try using specialist garden wood paints to give a rundown shed or summer house a long-lasting injection of life. By working with, rather than against, the shape of the land, Danny has made a striking contemporary showpiece from a production line plot in just a few daylight hours. So will Claire and Richard be bowled over by their new look garden? Ready? Richard, Claire. OK, this oh. is your brand new garden. Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> You've painted it. You've painted it. The cat's Wendy house is still there. That looks so much better. <gasps> that is amazing. Thank it you is. so much. Yeah. Claire, you nominated Rich for this because you wanted to say thank you for him being so supportive. Is it good enough for you? <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely what I wanted. And more. Yeah, I feel proud that we can bring people around now. It looks bigger. It looks it a does, lot yeah. bigger. Definitely. Oh, that's huge. <laughs> So you've got, <gasps> carrying on what we were talking about earlier, about energy flow and feng shui, you've got circles. the curves, yeah, the circles, the entertaining space. That is amazing. Oh, I'm so proud. <laughs> it's go smack, I can. It looks so much better. How would you feel about entertaining friends and family in this space now, then? Oh, it's happening. Oh, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Definitely. Proud. Very proud. Proud to show a garden off. Oh, yeah. We've got summer when it's cold to be able to have a wood burner. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. I can't believe you've managed to do that in the time limit you've had. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. Are oh, you? I am, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely, you? yeah. <laughs> Come and have a seat. Yeah. Oh, let's go and have a Go, go and have, have an down. explore. <laughs> you should be very pleased, Danny. Thank they you. wanted somewhere they can spend a bit of time together. Yeah. To have something they can be proud of. Recharge their batteries, and I think this is a space they're going to have a lot of fun in. Great job. Thank you very much. About time something nice happened. <laughs> it's a new chapter. With a good end. <laughs> 
Claire and Richard wanted a garden that they could entertain in and be proud of. But most importantly, they needed a space for themselves. Thank you. <laughs> With this instant garden, Danny and his team have created a relaxed space where this young couple can enjoy their future together. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Join us next time for another instant garden. more satisfying than a beautiful garden but what do you do if your outdoor space isn't quite so picture perfect and you're short on time well meet the instant gardener Ta -da! Danny Clark is an expert at transforming gardens here's my plan I'm gonna rejuvenate this garden each time our gardening guru will show you how to create gorgeous garden makeovers that's the art of garden design delegation each transformation will be packed with brilliant ideas and tips. It makes it easier to cut through. To help you get to grips with your own outdoor space. It does feel unnatural, but take your time. With his magical ideas. These flowers will look like they're floating in amongst the grasses. And advice on spending wisely on a budget. That's why Danny makes me bring a list. OK. Oh, my word. This is amazing. And because he's the instant gardener, everything you see will happen in just one day. Oh, my God. That looks so much better. Today, we're in Barnsley, a town with a proud industrial heritage nestling in the rolling hills of South Yorkshire. It may have once been a metropolis of mining, but beyond the relics of industry runs a rich seam of community life and nature at its greenest. In Yorkshire, you're never far from a bit of gorgeous countryside and the couple we're meeting today want to make the most of what is quite literally on their back doorstep. Hello! Hi. You must be Claire. I am, yeah. And Richard? Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You are done to come in? Thank you very much. Devoted young couple Claire and Richard live in a new build house, along with their three much loved cats. They married two years ago and have been trying for a family, but are now exhausted after several heartbreaking rounds of unsuccessful IVF. Now they've decided to take a break to recover from the emotional cost and focus on appreciating the friends and family they've already got. As they both work long hours at a mental health unit, their spare time is precious and they'd love a garden where they can relax together as well as entertaining their loved ones. Claire and Richard's existing garden sweeps up from the back of the house in a steep slope. Good for catching the sun, but making it both very hard to manage and difficult to make useful. Like many new homes, there's a noticeable lack of planting here, only an unkempt weed-ridden lawn and a lonely acer by the fence. There's a very small patio next to the house, but no real area for the couple to relax, unless, of course, it's in the pint-sized and dilapidated chalet in the corner. It may seem like an uphill task to Claire and Richard, but for Danny, the shape of this garden is a real design challenge. That, to me, looks like a brilliant place to sledge. Yes, it is. And we have spent many a Christmases sledging down that hill. Who's the Wendy house for? Uh, our cats. We work long hours, so we wanted somewhere for them to go when we weren't here. And somewhere nice and cosy, the food were in there, litter trays, mm. you know, to look after them. But it's become derelict now. The door fell off in the high winds we had. <laughs> yeah. And we haven't managed to put it back on because it's warped. <laughs> oh, well, it's cute. I thought it was where you put Richard when he's been in trouble. There's well, I spent many a night in there as well, so <laughs> it's not too bad. <laughs> So how do you use the garden at the minute? At the minute, we sit out on nights, use our wood burner, and that's pretty much it. How much of a problem is that, Danny? Well, we're going to work with it, bearing in mind that we're going to build a garden in a day. Yes. So what do you want out of it? Obviously, we get a lot of sun, so we like to suntan, and this is our serenity. <laughs> so you want this as a space in which you can entertain? Yes. Yeah. Family and friends, but mainly 
for us, <laughs> somewhere to relax and just peace and serenity. Easy maintain. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> but also on cold nights, maybe have wood burner out and mm -hmm. cosy, cosy night in his garden, rather than thinking, is it going to snow yet so we can sledge down that <laughs> <laughs> It's quite difficult, isn't it, because that is quite a steep slope. Good for rolling down. Yeah, it's not good for lawn mowing. No. no. Right, well, Danny, we're going to get out of your hair because yeah, I know okay. you've got plenty to be cracking on with. You know what's coming now, don't you, Helen? I've got the book. Thank you very much. OK. This is our shopping list. Are these going to be difficult plants to maintain? No, they should be nice and easy for you to maintain. Thank you very much. We'll get out of your hair and let you crack on. Right. Have fun. And you. Thank See you, you soon. See you soon. Bye. See you in a bit. While I take the couple off for a spot of research, Danny has only ten hours to transform their precipitous plot. So what's the plan, Dan? One of the things that I've noticed, as with a lot of new build properties, is this excuse for a patio down here. I won't even call it a patio, I'll just call it a path. So there's nowhere for them to sit. This is my plan. We're going to give Clay and Richard a new patio. Now, what most of us tend to do is build our patios very close to our houses. Now, that's absolutely fine, but I'm going to build a circular patio in the garden, which is going to cut into this bank. Now, this is going to make full use of the bank and the sun, which comes from just over there. Now, I'm going to rejuvenate this garden with contemporary plants in the style of prairie planting. Prairie plants will love the conditions in this garden because we've got full sun here and also it's free draining. So they will thrive. I'm going to work with the tree that's in this garden. And what I mean by work with the tree is that I'm going to add another two just to give the garden more height and more interest. So we've got a low planting of the grasses and that's going to be complemented with the height of the trees. Overall, we're going to do a contemporary design for a contemporary couple and I think that will suit them down to the ground. Danny's handyman AJ and horticultural expert Lou are here to help as always. But Danny and his team never say no to extra help and two of Claire and Richard's friends, Gavin and another Claire, have stepped up to the plate. Hello, Claire. Hello, Gavin. Hello. Yeah. So, you are the helpers for the day, are you? We yep. are. Right, how do you know these guys? What's, uh, how have you got roped into this? Uh, we know them through work. You both know them through work? Yeah. yeah. All right, then. Have they ever helped you help out on projects like this before? Uh, no, first time. Yeah. Are you used to manual labour? Uh, not no, really. but I'm willing to give it a good shot. Right. We're going to build a circular patio here. Oh, lovely. And we're going to cut it into that bank. Hmm. Right, and that's going to be infilled with slate, and it's going to be edged with timber, and we're going to have a flower bed running around there. Do you lovely. think they'll like it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Good. brilliant. That's a relief. I bet it's a relief to you as well, isn't it, AJ? Well, for the time being, <laughs> until you change it as usual. Yeah, but AJ... That's a designer's prerogative, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> He's a broken man. I am. I am. Right, AJ, I think the first task for us to do is get some marker string and mark out where this patio is going to go. Mowing the lawn before digging will help lose some weight from that circle of turf that they're going to have to dig out. Now, when you go higher with it, just remember to lift your wrist up a little bit. Are you getting good at this, aren't you? I'm getting good. With the edge of the patio marked out, it's time to start the biggest job of the day. Shifting over two tonnes of earth to create the patio area. Starting with stripping that freshly mown turf. Go, AJ. Once we've taken the turf off, we're then going to dig down and barrow the earth into skip, which is at the front of the house. With a skip already hired and extra hands to help barrow the waste, it sounds easy enough. But not everyone's got the knack of this gardening lark yet. Show me how you would dig. Hmm, <laughs> <in. laughs> distinct lack of welly there. Right, OK. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'll show you how to dig. So Claire was doing this. We respect you, Claire. <laughs> Pathetic, weren't it? Now, now digging, just, you've got to really go for it. Right. Don't be frightened. <laughs> just, just go for it and give it some oomph. Just take out a section. Don't go too far back. Here. Just go... Yeah, just take out a little section. 
go around the turf like that. Yeah? Yeah. So you dug into chop the turf, away. chop away, and then go down. There they are. See? Piece of cake. Right, we'll see if it works. In. Uh, <laughs> wiggle. 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 Yeah. Go on, you can do it. Push it again, and then push down deeper. Once you're out of the way. That's it. Well done. First, nice bit of mark. First proper dig. <laughs> Oh, I'm going ahead now. But in a strange sort of way, is it easier now? Oh, yeah, Yeah, they've got technique. I didn't realise there was so much to dig in. Yeah, there is, but it, once you've got the technique, it is a lot easier. See any sweat? Not yet. With the sun making a rare instant garden appearance, the team are soon sweating away. Meanwhile, I've planned a more relaxing morning for Richard and Claire at a local garden, also built into a steep slope. Like Danny's design, it's made for tranquility and socialising, with the help of some Eastern influences. OK. Now, have a look Ooh. at this. Crikey. Water feature, mm. grasses, that sort of prairie-style planting. What do you make of this? I like the bushy-type things. <laughs> I don't know what they're called, but I like them. Is that the technical term? Yeah. Yep, 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 for me. <laughs> Ponds, I've, I've only ever had one pond before in my life. I didn't really maintain it very well. Quick, let's get Danny on the phone now. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite, you see, a lot of people find water quite relaxing. Do you think this has had yes. a calming effect? Yes. It's a calming effect. We, we've seen a few features before, haven't we? Yeah, we have, Trickling yeah. water, not necessarily a pond, but trickling water, and that's been nice. Sort of borderline before you need to go to the toilet. That, that's sort of relaxing, <laughs> isn't it? It's a nice, it's a nice feature. I like this. Yeah. It's lovely. Yeah. And lots of wispy grass. Cats yeah, would like seems that. Seems maintenance. I like that. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, there's plenty more to see in this garden, so lead the way, Richard. Will do. Do you like the feel of that, Claire? I like it, and I think cats like that sort of wispiness. Oh, so it's more for the cats than yes. you. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot of different plants going on. Colours. <laughs> do you like that? Yes, mm, I do like colour, a bit yeah. of colour. Well, come this way, because I think you're going to like what's around the corner. I want them to see this circular seating area in the hall that they'll want something similar of their own. Is would you like something like that? Yes, I would. Mm, yeah, definitely. It, it stands out, that's what I like. And you've talked about using this as a space to entertain, bring your family yes. and friends mm. round. I'd be proud for them to see things like that in our garden. Have a look at this show-stopping plant. It looks very fancy, quite posh. It's a garden onion, but it's actually very easy to look after. I don't know a lot about flowers and plants, but it's really posh, doesn't it? It looks nice. It... Colourful. Yeah, colourful, yeah. yeah. And this is very low maintenance. You put a bulb in, it grows like that. You don't have to do a lot. It's something that we'd want. Yeah, that's definitely for us. Right, well, the next bit you're going to love. This garden has not one, but several circular areas. An idea which could work brilliantly for social creatures Claire and Richard. Right, have a seat, you two. Oh. Now, Thank you. this really does have the wow factor, doesn't it? It does. It looks low maintenance and very nice. What do you think of this sort of entertaining space? I like it because it involves, it'll be involving everybody in the family. It's not yeah, just it's one ideal. or two. Yeah. It's it's everybody's around one place. Can everybody get... together, you know, maybe a game or two, deck of cards. You know, it's Would you use the garden as an extension of your house? I mean your kitchen's normally your, your focal point where everybody gathers, but I think it's nice if it's your garden. Yeah. Especially in the summer months where yeah. it's it's nice sunshine in our garden anyway. Yeah. Back in Claire and Richard's own garden. The circular groundworks are in full swing, and Danny's picked up a few more helpers along the way. Now, I just found this OV 